What's going on, everybody? The Coven Riggins here, Marcus Lee Brown. Welcome to our new podcast, Becoming Filmmakers. Um, we're excited to launch this project for you all as indie filmmakers ourselves. We want to do everything we can to help all the indie filmmakers out there really become successful at this thing. Yeah, and start looking at it more instead of a hobby or a passion, but let's start approaching this as a business. Yeah, we've been in the game for about five years. We started Notice Studios five years ago, and it has been a thrill ride for us with all the things we've been able to do, all the things we've been able to learn and accomplish. We didn't go to school for this. However, we've been schooled in this by diving into as many courses as we can find and um, just the experience of making films. I personally come from a music production background where I've done music production, I've done mixing, mastering, um, and all those different things. And now I've ventured the last five years of my life into filmmaking. And so that's why we want to title this Becoming Filmmakers. And me, myself, I, again, five years in the game, like you said, but also I come from an editing background. Uh, and since then, I've really dove into courses and really trying to understand the formula of what editing and color grading looks like. Yeah, so again, we want to really challenge everyone out there with this podcast, uh, with some of the, the information we're going to be bringing to you, but also just hear from you all about your journeys and, and, and the things that you've learned and the things that you're growing in and the questions that you might have that we may be able to answer. Uh, this podcast is for all of us that want to be filmmakers, that are filmmakers, but we're still growing in this craft. Um, and that's why I want to call it Becoming Filmmakers. So if you are looking to grow in your filmmaking career and you want a community that's going to help you do that, and you really want to turn this thing into a business where you're making money doing it, you reached the right place. So welcome to Becoming Filmmakers. We are excited again to talk to each and every one of you about your journey. And you get to hear about ours. We out. Have you always wanted to make a feature film, but for some reason it's just not happening? And not just not happening, but even when you get to act one, scene one, it just never seems to get down to fade to black or slam to black. That's you. I'm gonna teach you one thing that you can change that will allow you to make that feature film you've always wanted to make. Let's go. What's up, everybody? DeCoven Riggins here. And Marcus E. Brown here. Welcome back to Becoming Filmmakers. So today, we are talking to you about your mindset. That is the biggest hindrance, I say, is to pretty much most of the filmmakers that I talk to, all the indie filmmakers that have not taken the plunge to make a feature, mm -hmm. up here is stopping them big time. Yeah, uh, it's, it's your mindset and, and thinking what this I need to have all of these things before I, I can make a movie this this has to be perfect and I gotta make sure I have even this program if I'm gonna write or if I'm gonna do call sheets like everything has to be the way I learned it in in this order or I, I just can't make this movie and I don't fault them because they did learn it a particular way and that is true there are certain things that you should do when you're making a movie mm -hmm. uh I'd say the principles don't change to making a movie, but the ones who do it, it's because up here they made up in their mind, I'm not stopping, I'm going to make a movie. And they don't let things get in their way. Yeah, and, and I can say like, you know I mean, even if you, you take it out of film, if, if we needed to go downtown, then we both 
can make it downtown, but that doesn't mean we're going to go there the exact same way. There's all a bunch of different ways to get to the same point. Exactly. And as filmmakers, I believe we need to start examining every avenue and every road to get to our destination and not just saying this is the way I learned it. So this is the only way to get there. Yeah, I think back to our first feature, um, a lot of roadblocks. A lot of stumbles. Mm -hmm. um, so much we didn't know when we made our first feature, but we had a big scene that was, so our first feature, Black Wall Street Burner, if you haven't seen it, go see it, but we're gonna spoil it a lot, but it's been out for several years, so. You should have seen it already. And you should already know the history anyway. Yeah. So we have the big scene where uh, the guys are trying to go down and protect uh, Dale mm -hmm. at the jail. Mm -hmm. We did everything we were supposed to do to get the streets blocked off, to allow ourselves to be able to use this sheriff uh, station. We got to use inside. We got to use the jail. We got to film everything we need to film inside. When we were ready to go outside and film, what happened? Rain. <laughs> tons and tons of rain. So, so much so that we had to go grab shelter. And then the rain calmed down it seemed like it was about to stop, so we started setting back up to yep. shoot it. And then it started raining again. again. Oh, man. And, like, for a lot of people, that would have been devastating because, again, this was the big moment mm -hmm. where you got the gunfight, yep. where you see one side standing up for the other side, trying to stand up for Dale. Um, some plot points in there that we, we had already written in dealing with Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. This was a big moment. And I don't even remember us thinking, like, what are we going to do? Mm, no, we kind of just was like, OK, okay yeah, we'll, we'll figure, figure it out. out. Like, we got this other stuff that we have to do. Yeah. Our mindset was always, OK, well, let's do the next thing, and we'll figure it out when we get over here. We'll find somewhere where we can shoot it, but we're going to do it. We just can't do it now. Yeah. And we, we found a, a compromise, a different place where we could get it done um i don't think it was as great of a place no but it, but impact was still it, the good. impact was still the same and so i say that's one of the things that we we talk about all the time is your mindset you really can't be a super pessimist when you're making a movie mm -hmm. you have to be optimistic about i'm gonna figure this thing out and we're gonna get it done yeah and, and i say man that is one of the biggest hurdles to indie filmmakers why we get stuck in this wheel of I gotta make nine short films before I can even attempt to look at making a feature um, and I'm not saying don't do that because you're gonna sharpen your skills like we would have had more skills if we made yeah. more but we got a lot of skills doing, doing that, that feature, feature. We so did. like don't stop yourself because you think or you heard somebody say you have to do this examine yourself and examine your mind Right. And I and I will look at it this way too. Like I, I know as a as a filmmaker, there's a lot of rules that we're given. Uh, but I'm a firm believer that we can bend a lot of those rules. And, and even in some cases, repurpose some of those rules. And there are times where you'll have to break them. So I'm not saying it's not important to know what the rules are. But at the same time, as a filmmaker, you you got to be able to, to to fit into different boxes and change things. And I mean, this is art. We're, we're supposed to be artistic. So even if I'm drawing a picture, I don't want to be like, well, I want to use this red, but at the same time, the rules say I got to use yellow. Like, then you're, you're, you're stifling your own creativity. And artists don't say, oh, I can't do this picture until I have these colored pencils. Right. If I don't have these colored pencils, I can't do... No, they go out and they make it happen with what they have. And that's really what we had. Same thing with chefs. Yeah, a lot of chefs that what's in the kitchen. And, and that and ain't now messed up that way. And I mean, that's what that's the way we have to be as filmmakers as well. Um, I think about uh, the films that made us. Mm -hmm. Brilliant documentary, uh, documentary series. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. It's on Netflix. Netflix. Mm -hmm. um, they have the same challenges at the highest levels. Mm. I really think about it was Home Alone, I believe, that lost funding, mm -hmm. like early on when they were shooting, but gain funding I think the same day because the producer was working on making things happen and but that's just kind of the thing 
at every level, you're going to have those kind of challenges and pushbacks. And I know a lot of indie filmmakers want to get to the independent and Hollywood film level. Um, but you need to sharpen those skills down here at the indie level first before you're going to be able to move up and yeah. persevere through some things. Because anybody that's going to be handing you a check to make a movie, they're definitely going to want to know that you got what it takes to get it done. And mm -hmm. why not do it now at the smallest level so that when you get to the, the larger levels, you're not pulling your hair out trying to figure out how to make it happen. Yeah, I agree. You, you got to be able to pivot. Yep. Uh, pivoting is is, is pivotal. <laughs> yeah, so. we, and we talk about that in, in our book, The Four Month Feature. We talk about being uh, pointed like a laser, but being fluid as water. Fluid as water. And uh, the interesting thing, so a fellow filmmaker, Bruce Lee once said, to be like water, because water can fit in anything that you put it in. So we have to be like that as filmmakers. And so if I'm doing a drama, I need to be able to fit in that. If I'm doing a comedy, I should be able to fit in that. And no matter what obstacles I'm facing, I could just rearrange myself, my crew, my film in such a way where when you watch it, you won't even know all the pivot points we had to make because the goal was to make the best film possible. That's and that's what we did. That's good. I hope y'all soaking this up like a sponge. Soak this water up. Get this game. But really, your mind is the most powerful supercomputer that you have at your fingertips. So don't underestimate your mind, um, but utilize it in a positive way. Uh, we can make this happen no matter what's going on. Um, so one of the things that we want to give you is some ways that you can uh, really think about it. Um, embrace what's coming, mm -hmm. whatever's coming. Grab a hold of, of it, embrace it, because it's going to come um, no matter what. Uh, we were just shooting a, 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 a documentary last weekend, mm -hmm. and uh, a young woman that was running the show, first time kind of producing, directing, uh, she was frazzled, and we, we could see it because, again, it's our first time, and things weren't quite going exactly the way that, uh, that they were supposed to. And so we, we just told her, like, hey, however it's going to come, it's going to come. Don't worry your mind about, oh, my God, if this doesn't go right or if this doesn't go right. It's fine because it's going gonna, it's gonna to come however it's going to come. It's going to go whatever way it's going to go. You have to embrace it, just like, like we were just talking about water. If a change in the direction of the flow of water comes, water's just going to go right along with it. And we have to really keep that and embrace it and not fight against it. Because when you fight against it, that's when you're going to really have tension and you're going to probably rub somebody else the wrong way. You're going to rub yourself the wrong way mm -hmm. and, and really want to tear your hair out. Yeah, and as a director, we got to remember that you're the captain of the ship. So we go as you go as crew. So if you're depressed or, or frazzled or, or, or I don't know what we're going to do, now everybody is like, yep. well, if if the boss don't know what's going on, how are we supposed to bring your vision to life mm -hmm. if you're too frazzled to even stick with your own vision? So you need to remember as a director that you are being watched at all times. So keep yourself focused on the vision and focus on the goals because as your crew sees you able to pivot, they become pivotal as well. Yep. So, again, embrace the challenges, embrace whatever comes up. Stay resilient. Mm. Stay resilient, stay resourceful. Um, always know you have something in your hand. Come on. There's always something in your hand. So whatever's around you, you can turn it into whatever it is you need. And will it always be exactly what you thought it was going to be? Probably not. But know that by finishing it, the audience won't know. Yeah. The audience won't. The audience only knows what you show them. Mm -hmm. So... If, if it's not to your liking, hey, man, when you get more money, go back and redo it. Make make it a, make a better version. We did it. But we, we did. <laughs> but until then, do what you got to do. Be resourceful. Use what's in your hand to make things happen. Any other tips for them? No, I think I think that's that's good for, for mindset. Just be water, my friends. Be water and be pointed. Mm. Like a laser. Again, our book, the four month feature. Uh, we have a link down in the description. If you want to pick it up and check it out. But right now, what we want to do is we want to spin a wheel. Yes, sir. This wheel is going to have uh, 
multiple different price points. And whatever it lands on, we're going to uh, build out a production cart so that we can produce a movie at whatever dollar amount it is. So let's check it out. Let's look at this production package that we can put together for $500. So first, what we get is we get a camera, a used DSLR or mirrorless camera. We hop on like eBay or you know Facebook Marketplace and we get something like a, a Canon Rebel T6 or a Nikon D 3400 or a Sony Alpha 5000. Like I said, if you go on these platforms, you should be able to cop that between $200 and $300. Uh, next, got to get a microphone. You need audio. So probably a Rode video mic go. Now, this is affordable and quality shotgun microphone that attaches directly to your camera. It's lightweight and doesn't require a battery. Costs usually around 60 to 70 bucks. So third, we'll get lights. Uh, we get a two-pack of newer lights. They're the they're dimmable LED lights that you can use. Um, it's gonna cost you between 50 and 60 bucks for a pack of two. Then, of course, if you're gonna get a camera, you're gonna need to set it on something. So I get a pair of sticks or tripods. So I'll probably go to Amazon Basic 60 inch lightweight tripod. It's an affordable tripod that offers stability and it's easy to carry around, which will help because you know tripods can get heavy after a while. Cost it around 20, 30 bucks. All right, so next we'll need memory. We can go with SanDisk 64 gigabyte SD card. Uh, it's gonna cost you between 15 to 20 dollars. I'd get one or two of those. Now this next one is optional, so it'll be completely up to you. But if you want to get an audio recorder, you can get a Zoom H1N handy recorder. But I would definitely recommend getting it used. It's gonna cost you around 50 to 70 dollars. But again, that's optional. Now, just for extras, we we'll throw in a camera bag. That's optional, very inexpensive. You can get a reflector. You know the five in ones. Um, this will cost you somewhere between $20 to $30, depending on, you know, where you look. Amazon, eBay, those places you can get these things for pretty cheap. So $500, um, that's the list. Go pause the video, take a look at uh, the list uh, of things that you can buy for $500. I think that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. And, I, stuff. and as a filmmaker, I know we hear $500, and that sounds like a lot. But if you're in the industry we're in, $500 is not a lot of money. Not a lot of money at all. But even with that that small amount of money, look at what we were able to, to put together and build. So don't let money be your stumbling block or your obstacle. You just have to find a way, like, like we keep saying, be pointed. You know what you want to do. So even if 500 is all you have, we just built you a whole production kit. Yep. So don't let money be an obstacle for you. Don't at all. Now, we're going to keep putting out episode after episode, one each week, so be ready for it. But um, be in the comments. Mm -hmm. Let us know what's challenging y'all when it comes to making feature films, because really that's what we're going to be talking about. We're not going to really talk about making uh, short films. Um, you can make short films. You can do that. Um, but we're going to talk about making features, because to me, that's where you're going to really make your money. Definitely. Um, and we're going to really dive into that and really show you how you can turn this thing into a real business going to generate you real money um, and doing the thing you love. Like, we love making movies mm -hmm. and we make money doing it. What's better than that? You know what I'm saying? So, uh, stick with us. Uh, give us a like. Comment. Subscribe. Again, let us know what's plaguing you with making a feature. I know most of y'all going to say money. What else other than money is plaguing you for making a feature? Uh, but Again, I'm DeCoven Riggins. I'm Marcus C. E. Brown. And we will see you on the next Becoming Filmmakers. Peace.